This is Science Quest. With your host, Jed Allen Friel. Everything science. Is Hi, science I'm Jed Allen Friel, and thanks for joining me today on Science Quest. We've traveled into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, almost a thousand miles offshore, to the island of Puerto Rico to land ourselves at the largest radio telescope in the world here at Arecibo. Arecibo, Puerto Rico is home to this radio telescope. Can't wait for you to see it. So let's step on inside and let's take a look at what we find today in Puerto Rico. You made me recall some of the greatest movies of all time, like Contact, when Jodie Foster listened for radio waves from outer space, hoping to make contact with other civilizations. Maybe myth, maybe fiction, but the fact of the matter is, the Earth is bombarded every single minute of every single day with thousands of radio impulses from deep outer space. The only way we know for sure what's happening in outer space is to listen closely to it. This particular radio telescope here at Arecibo was built into the side of the mountain, which was what enabled it to be the largest radio telescope in the world. Most radio telescopes have to be supported from behind, so the size and scope of them is limited. The second fact that made this a very usable radio telescope was you have to have a focal point above the telescope's dish. That focal point is usually supported from the dish itself. Here, through these large towers that you see across the way, you find that the dish itself can be supported through these large cables. To make the radio telescope, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. They used 38,770 panels. And if you look over at those panels, each panel was put together with less than a two millimeter precision intolerance to make this telescope happen. When they got done with all of these panels to make up the dish itself, the reflector weighed 300 tons. Another example why it had to be built into the side of a mountain so that it could be supported behind. The platform itself that is sprung by the cables across this particular valley weighs 10 tons, 20,000 pounds. That being said, the mass alone would be impossible for this telescope to be supported any place else except in the side of the mountain here at Arecibo on the island of Puerto Rico. Here inside the radio telescope observatory room is a great example of how the radio telescope works. You can see the dish built into the mountain here in this particular diagram. And you can see that some of the rays, these yellow rays that have been traveling from outer space for years, hit the pulsars or hit the actual dish itself and then bounce up to the receiver, then which take that radio data inside. There are other things the radio telescope does. It will transmit a radio pulse out into our solar system, bounce it off close items which will come back, and then that is also received and recorded. What happens then is we're able to tell distance and size and how things move. The radio telescope gives us huge amounts of information, yet it doesn't use light like we talked about earlier. It's using radio waves instead. All of our scientific learning uses lots of tools. Tools like the radio telescope built here in the mountain of Arecibo on the island of Puerto Rico. But there are other tools we use in the quest for knowledge. Tools like the simple question, the basis for the scientific process. What is out there? Wouldn't we like to know? I'm Jed Allen Friels, and thanks for joining me today on Science Quest.